let us prove Wick's theorem and let me remind you what we saw um, last time. So you saw that if you take a time ordered product of fields phi i x1 to phi i x n, so you have n number of fields here, okay, then the time ordered product can be written as a normal order product uh, of, I mean, uh, you, you normal order the product of the fields phi i to phi, phi i x1 to phi i x n and also you have to sum up all the possible contractions just like we saw uh, in this case for the case of four fields okay so you have all these uh, all these four fields here and the terms involving contractions so let's prove it in general and the proof will be through induction and for ease of notation i will drop writing phi i x i and instead I will write phi i. Okay, so if it is phi i x1 it becomes phi 1 and so forth. So the theorem we want to prove is that if you take a time order product of n fields then that is just a normal order, a, a normal order product of these fields. Okay, so you have these operators, but you should normal order them. And the reason this is useful is because once you have normal ordered operators, they kill the vacuum if uh, to the right and also to the left. Okay, so that's the reason why we want to do this. Now we have already seen that this is true for n equal to two. Okay, and let us say the statement is true for n minus 1 fields and then we will prove that it is true for n fields also Okay, if, if these two conditions are satisfied. So let us start. So I am given that I mean, we are assuming that this is true for n minus 1 fields. So, this is just all possible contractions involving, let us let's name it 2 here, it will be easier to do then or that's fine. Involving uh, all possible contractions. That's fine. That's sufficient to write. Okay. Now let's see what we get for n uh, n fields. So let me assume that x one zero, the time of x the time component of x one is the largest one. The time component of x two is the second largest and the time component of x n is the smallest. Okay, assume this and then I can write T time order product of these fields as phi x 1 phi x okay I was writing 1 and 2 phi 1 phi 2 Phi n. Okay, just because I have assumed this time order, so the one with the largest time comes to the leftmost position and so forth. Okay, but if this is not really the uh, time order, if it is something else, then we just write the corresponding uh, relation here. So suppose x2 not was greater than x1 not and others remain the same, then I will write here phi 2 phi 1 up to phi n okay and whatever I give in the argument below does not really depend on this. So, you can you can choose the time order you want and then uh, the same thing will follow 
Okay, so this is fine. So I write it as phi 1. Now see phi 2 to phi n. I have chosen this time ordering, right? Which means that these are time ordered. These are correctly time ordered. So phi 2 has the argument, a time argument which is larger than any of the other fields here. Similarly, phi 3 here, if it phi 3 here will have time argument larger than any of the fields which follow here. Okay. So I can write this piece using uh, this statement, which is true for n minus 1 fields. So phi 2 to phi n, these are n minus 1 fields. So I can write this right hand side. Okay. Good. Now I write phi one as phi one plus plus phi one minus. Okay. And the note that when I take this and put in here, I will be multiplying phi one plus with these terms, this normal order product plus phi one minus times this normal order product. Now the one with phi 1 minus is easy because if you take phi 1 minus okay, and you multiply with this normal order product, you can take the phi 1 minus within the uh, normal ordering. Let me write it down. So whatever you have here, this you can write as Okay, let's whatever was there. Okay, this is true because you see here uh, these fields are operators. Right? These these are operators, and this one is sitting to le to the left of everything. Okay, and what a normal order say ordering says it says that put all the five minuses to the left and five pluses to the right. Okay, and five minuses commute among themselves, of course, and five pluses commute among themselves. So you can take this phi 1 minus which sits to the left and if you put in the normal order, what will the normal order do? It will put all the minuses to the left, which is exactly what you have here. right? So this is true. Now let us look at the other term, um, which is phi 1 plus okay times this operator now phi 1 times whatever operator i can write as phi 1 um, commutator with o plus o phi 1 plus Okay. Now here again you see this is the correct one. This is if the phi 1 plus is, plus is to the right then it is a normal order thing. So I can write uh, this piece, this term here as phi 1 plus, I am writing this term now, phi 1 plus and there's these all these operators plus all contractions involving phi 2 to phi n. Okay. And this can be brought into the normal ordering. 
ok. So, let us look at this term first this times the phi 1 plus ok or phi 1 plus here times this normal order product. So, I am looking at the first term here ok. So, you get looking at the first term phi 1 plus and our first term involves no contractions only these fields ok and as I said here this times this operator. So, let us say O represents this operator this I can write as a normal order product involving these two ok. So, I will have a uh, the same phi 2 to phi n and phi 1 plus ok and in the normal order ok and then you have these com uh, the commutators. So, what you get here is ok. So, because this is normal order this will automatically put phi 1 plus to the right to, to the right of all phi minuses and of course, if there are other phi pluses it will anyway you can commute them it does not matter, but so, so it is clear that this is how you can write and the commutators will give these terms. And so forth. Which is from you can put all in one big normal ordered uh, bracket. So, you have phi 1 plus phi 2 phi n. So, this is the first term and then you have all these contractions. Okay. So, I am replacing this commutator by the contraction because they have been ordered correctly in the time. If it was other way around then you would have got the corresponding um, um, contraction. So, this and so this is what you are going to get it is easy to check that this is true. Okay. Now, I mean if you do the same thing for these terms other terms which involve less number of operators because there are some contractions you will get a similar thing here right. So, all those operators that are missing from this these terms they will appear as um, contractions and other operators will get contracted with phi 1 plus and give you other uh, propagators or contractions ok. Now, let us so we are looking at this piece right now I have taken care of phi 1 plus on this and I can now combine with the other term. So, I had a phi 1 see this phi 1 is phi 1 plus plus phi 1 minus. So, now let us combine with phi 1 minus term also and as you can see you can write or use this. So, you had phi 1 plus ok this term I am writing right now this one plus from the phi 1 minus we had this ok and of course, these two you can add and put the normal ordering outside because it gives the same result and of course, phi 1 plus plus phi 1 minus is just phi 1. So, I get this ok and the same will 
the similar things will hold for all the other terms. So you see that we finally get um, the time order product of n number of fields is just the normal ordered product of n fields and plus all possible contractions. Okay, so let us continue discussion further in the next video.